meeting for September 15th, 2009. With me today is Mayor Bloom and Council Member Schneider. Um, today's agenda consists of uh, only one item, which is the funding allocation for the city's community promotion grants uh, with the Santa Barbara County Arts Commission for fiscal year 2010. And so, um, Jenny, will you be making the presentation? Great. Why don't you go ahead? Chair Horton, members of the Finance Committee, I'd like to um, just talk a little bit about specifically about this year's grants process. Um, there were a total of 67 grant requests this year. This year's staff, following up on the recommendations of the Finance Committee, made uh, attendance at one of the technical support workshops mandatory. We, we found that that was very helpful. Um, this provided uh, staff an opportunity to inform groups of the decrease in funding pools, to provide guidance in their grant requests, and to encourage partnerships and collaborations to increase the access to uh, the arts and communities and neighborhoods during these challenging economic times. Staff also added an additional workshop and scheduled one of the workshops for the after uh, the after the eight to five workday to make uh, grant attendance more uh, attendance more possible for those that weren't available to get off work to attend. Um, we also got the word out through weekly e blast now that we have at the Arts Commission and our updated website is continues I think to be a valuable resource. We made all of the grant applications and necessary forms and contracts all available on that website. Additionally, staff encouraged first time applicants to send a draft of the grant proposal in advance of the deadline to staff for input and provided an opportunity for any applicants who wanted to take advantage of having a staff review uh, and input before the deadline, uh, and we had a lot of takers in that category. The result was um, a much stronger set of grant applications in all categories this year, and we heard that information from all of the grant review panels. Um, in the area for the community arts grants, uh, there were 23 applicants applying for a uh, grants from a grant pool of 54,475 with funding requests totaling 124,000. There were four first-time applicants in this category and, and I wanted to mention a number of those actually were coming from projects or community involvement from the Next Generation Pilot Grant Program. Um, and then there were also three applicants moving from different categories either from organizational development or events and festivals. In the area of organizational development, there were 30 nonprofit organizations applying for uh, 392,882 in grant requests for a pool of $167,000. There were, um, I think an important trend to note was that there were five organizations that moved from events and festivals to organizational development. I think this is funded in large part with the economic downturn. Organizations are looking to just have over, overhead, to co co overhead costs covered since they've lost money through their endowments that often fund some of those costs. They've lost funding from foundations and they've lost funding from private sources. So that was a trend uh, we expected and sort of made recommendations to, to keep the, the amount in that category as much as we possibly could. Um, there were 14 nonprofit organizations applying for events and festivals grant for the $132,000 in funds available. Funding requests in that category totaled $296,500. Uh, which was more than $164,500 than were funds available. Um, I wanted to mention that uh, committee recommendations were made and approved to the City Arts Advisory at the, its July 16th meeting. In addition, panel comments have been included in recent years uh, that give us an opportunity to let the grantees know what it is that the grant found strong, the strengths and weaknesses, but I think it also provides uh, Arts Commission staff a great opportunity to highlight the good work that so many of these arts organizations are doing. 
I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the arts community in general to thank the council for your recognition of the role that the arts play in serving as a revenue generator uh, and how we um, help fun fund uh, tourism through cultural arts and uh, promoting Santa Barbara as a cultural arts destination. I know these are challenging times and I also want to take this opportunity to um, thank those volunteers that work on these advisory committees, the Events and Festivals Committee and the Arts Advisory Committee, who dedicate time and a lot of um, thoughtfulness that goes into the review of grants and, and making their very uh, thoughtful recommendations. Um, and I want to thank the arts community and the nonprofits for their adaptability and for their efforts to collaborate, share resources, leverage technology, and continue to do, find creative ways to do more with less. <laughs> and I, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, questions from committee? Um, well, it's more of a comment unless you want to expand on it a little bit. I know in the last couple of years we've, you have um, expanded the review period in terms of, like you mentioned, the mandatory um, applications, the orientation session or whatever, and, and it sounds like that that's working very well in terms of getting the message across about how to apply and be successful or have the best possible application possible. And, uh, so, and so I just want to commend you for that. I know it's been you know, the last couple of years we've been tweaking the process as much as we can and, and trying to make it more understandable for um, different organizations who haven't applied before. Um, and it sounds like that that seems to be working. Yeah, I think for, for those people that have been applying for grants for the last 10 or more years, um, found it a little like, why are we coming to this? But the, but the majority of them felt it was extremely helpful to understand what the, what the concerns are and just the fact that there is much money um, much less money available, and how, again, to c encourage organizations to partner, share resources, and do what they can to really make the, um, the arts also increase that um, accessibility to the community right. and their, their neighborhoods. To and just look at that component. Great. And just looking forward, I think in the Arts Advisory Committee, there's some vacancies coming up. So if people, anyone listening out there, uh, are interested in participating in this, the uh, advisory interviews and application period is coming up. But there's, I think, two or three uh, openings. If I believe there are two. Two, okay. So just to plug that out there since we're talking about it. But they, you did great work as usual. Uh, I just had one question. Uh, Mayor Bloom, do you have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Ginny, on uh, page four of seven, Project Renaissance, I'm, I'm familiar with uh, practically all these projects. This one I, I wasn't really familiar with. Can you... Uh, elucidate a little bit on that one. CA 14. Mm -hmm. um, I can. This is a, a group that I think uh, has made tremendous uh, inroads, I think, into terms in terms of reaching at-risk youth on the west side in particular. They provide after-school evening programs. Um, they've gotten students there too. They've done everything from mural projects to, and they, they actually serve as a resource for other groups that are actually interested in um, programs that uh, are to promote more engagement of youth in creative, creative processes. And they have one of the projects I know that they've done in recent years is a, a mural at uh, Iman Nari. But uh, again, um, they're one of their, if you look at these, there are not a lot of activities going on on the west side, and this certainly I think is important. Um, okay, two questions, two follow-up questions. Uh, do you know if they are tied in with our uh, west side community center in any way? And then the second question, um, I attended the ceremony uh, for the Boys and Girls Club on the west side. Were they involved with that project? I honestly can't speak. I'm not certain. I, I can't answer that. What about involvement with the community center over there? Um, I don't know if they have direct involvement. I yeah, mean, I, I would think that they have connections, but they certainly um, really have, are finding, getting, starting a program that very, basically reaches at-risk youth right. and families, and they're building sort of a, uh, they're building a grassroots, almost family-to-family, -family, um, sibling-to-sibling kind of okay. program. Mayor Bloom? Yeah, they uh, they meet at Harding School in the little building in the back, and they are, um, I don't know how I got an invitation about a year and a half ago maybe, 
um, to come over and see, and I've been very impressed uh, with how they reach the youth. But it is a new program, and it's kind of struggling a little bit for, for the finances because the woman that runs it is very wonderful, but she's like so many of us who, who aren't so good at going out and getting some money. But uh, she's very wonderful. She's a psychologist, and she really understands um, how to reach these at-risk youth who are very loyal to that program. And they've had, they're connected sometimes with Antioch. They had a program over at Antioch, and they, um, I think they would like to be involved in various things around the city. So getting them involved with the West Side Community Center would be really good. We'll have to and I that can out. speak to, they did receive some funding from the state because that was one yes, of the problems. They, they had a funding source that addressed. So now that they have increased funding, I expect that they will be. Well, and they almost mm -hmm. went out of business until they got that funding. So now they have a little bit. And I think it's I think it's a really good program because I took some of those kids out to up to have pizza. <laughs> they sure can eat, but <laughs> but they are uh, they're very loyal to the program. They're very good, so that's a good thing. Uh, I had a couple uh, just observations more than anything. Um, the fact that we have few, uh, less money, but a lot of these groups seem to be. Um, working with teens in one way or another they're working with kids and uh, or or in the schools like the vocal jazz uh, foundation and so on and i think i know that's that's going to be kind of typical but also in these times it's very very wonderful that so many are still hanging in there with all the kids and you know with the youth violence and then with the cutbacks at the schools the combination is just uh it's it's really awful so much cut back in schools and then um, the kids need more to do so I think it's I, I just wanted to note that because so many of these are just the uh, for instance the mariachi festival the youth mariachi festival that's going to be absolutely wonderful it's a good group too so um, so thank you for doing all this work and I really think the process for some it, it, uh, usually processes don't make if, or maybe it's prosai or something. Uh, they don't make groups stronger. They're just frustrating. But this process, I really think it makes the group stronger uh, because of the way you've worked on it. And that, uh, you know, to bring people in and, and let them know yes and no and all that sort of thing, I think it's very good. Great. Um, the um, committee has been asked to um, review this series of rec these series of recommendations and pass them on to council. Uh, in, in going through this package, I find that I am uh, um, associated with two of the organizations, uh, one of them being the Trust for Historic Preservation and the other one being City at Peace. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to recuse myself from, those, from the votes on those two items and ask that the, um, the committee, uh, someone make a motion to, to uh, vote on those separately and then mm -hmm. uh, according to City Attorney, I'm okay to vote on the rest of it. Okay, I can do that. Uh, I'll make. I'll first make the motion for the City of Peace and the um, Trust for Historic Preservation recommendations to move to council. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the abstain. abstain. Right. And then I'll move the rest of the recommendations to council. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Do you know when this is coming to council? Yes, Chair Horton, Committee Member Schneider, it's going next week to Council Great. on okay. September 22nd. Great, thank you. Okay, Jill, do you have further business for us today? I don't. That wraps it up for today. Well, then, thank you, uh, Jenny, for coming, and uh, thank you, Jill, for being here. Thank and we will adjourn the meeting. And thanks to our vast audience. <laughs>